Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to tell you about a few things I did in my Etsy shop this past month and if it did help increase sales or not. Plus I'm going to mention a few things that we need to watch out for as time progresses and things go on on Etsy. I posted a video a couple years ago about how I had turned the $35 free shipping guarantee off completely in my shop, why I did it, and how it really didn't make that much of a difference to my sales on Etsy at all. At this point, some of the things in my Etsy shop do ship free kind of on a listing level. Level, like individually and some have a shipping cost to them but I don't have the free shipping guarantee turned on for my entire shop. You have to remember that if you have the free shipping guarantee or you have something that ships for free individually it's treated the same in Etsy search as far as having a benefit or a you know an advantage goes. So it doesn't matter how you have that set up as long as there is free shipping attached to a listing in some way you do get that little extra boost and I'm doing the quotation marks because we know that there is a boost but it's not as much as they say that it is so how much of a boost there is is questionable but you do get that advantage regardless of how you have free shipping set up. So what I did this month is I decided to turn the free shipping guarantee on, but not because it's gonna give me an advantage in Etsy, because like I said, I already have a lot of my listings marked as free shipping. The reason that I decided to do it this way is because I'm now dealing with undercutters. So what the undercutters are doing is they're marking their stuff down really low, which is what undercutters do, but then they're marking it to have the shipping paid by the customer. They're not offering free shipping, but they do have the free shipping guarantee turned on in their shops. That means that if there is any kind of a benefit to having free shipping, the free shipping guarantee is equal to free shipping on a listing and everybody's getting the same benefit even though they are still charging for shipping for pretty much everything. And it's kind of a wash there as far as advantage in search placement goes. And really, when my prices show up next to theirs, when my listings are next to theirs in search, mine look a lot more expensive because they really are undercutting, but they're also charging exorbitant shipping compared to how much it actually costs. And they're making up a little bit of it on that end. They're just luring people in to click on them because their price looks lower to begin with in search. Now, this isn't such a big deal, you would think, because don't we have the free shipping badge and people can see that in search results? Well, yeah, that shows up on desktop. But what I also noticed recently is that those free shipping badges don't show up on the app. So when people are shopping on the Etsy app, then they don't see that there's free shipping attached to that listing until they actually click into the listing. So all they're seeing is the price and they wouldn't even know that my items ship for free if they're searching on the app and shopping on the app. If you check on the Etsy app, and this is the regular Etsy shopping app, not the Etsy seller app, you'll see that they have the star seller rating. They have, if it's on sale, it might show that. They might have, it, it's a best seller, but they don't show the free shipping badge. So that is a definite disadvantage if you're relying on that badge to show up and there's no other way for people to know that that listing ships for free compared to this one over here right next to it that looks like it's a lot cheaper. And since the majority of people are now shopping on the Etsy app, you do have to pay attention to it whether we like it or not. And if people are not seeing that your items ship for free because they're not showing that on the app, but the item right next to it looks cheap Cheaper, they're not going to click on the one that's more expensive and you know to find out that it has free shipping and the one that doesn't have free shipping still gets the same advantage because it has the free shipping guarantee turned on in the shop so you're basically competing on a different playing field but Etsy is giving both listings the same advantage if that makes sense does that make sense it makes sense in my head and if it does make sense to you and it's making light bulbs go off give this video a thumbs up because it definitely tells me that you enjoy this kind of video that's a strategic thing and then I can make more of that kind of stuff. So based on a few different criteria, I went into my shop, I dropped the price on certain things and pulled that free shipping cost out of it. So now the customer is paying for the shipping for those. Then on other things, I left them alone and left them at free shipping on an individual item basis. But I didn't do that because of Etsy. I did that because of the undercutters and that was just the first step. Now, the second step of this was to turn the free shipping guarantee back on for my entire shop. And I did that because of Etsy and the way that it looks at the free shipping for search placement and also because of the filters on the app. And one of the other things that you'll notice if you look at the Etsy app is that you'll see that their filters right up 
at the top and they have little bubbles for filters that basically lure people to clicking a bubble because people love clicking bubbles. And the first filter that I was seeing now as I'm recording this is price and the second one is arrival time. So anyway, I'm looking at these filters. I'm thinking, okay, Etsy's probably going to try to get people to choose a lowest price. I clicked on the price and the two things that open up at the top are free shipping and on sale. So Etsy's basically encouraging people to to filter for those two options, either free shipping or on sale. So turning the free shipping guarantee on takes care of that because everything in my shop is now gonna be included in that filter. But the on sale filter, I usually don't run sales, but I decided to go ahead and put my entire shop on sale for December at 20% off. But I also set that to a minimum of $50 and up for each sale. So you have to spend $50 before you get that sale. Now what that does is it'll include all of my listings in the sale filter. So I'm looking at both filters, trying to figure out a way to weasel in there. And I will just say, you cannot put your entire shop on sale permanently because that's illegal. And that's not just Etsy illegal, it's like illegal, illegal. So check the laws where you are and don't do this all the time. And to tell the truth, that didn't really make much of a difference to my sales. I didn't get people ordering more than $50 to get the sale. So I just turned that off. That was like the least effective of all the things that I tried to see what would drive sales. Okay, so I had done those two things, the free shipping, whole shop on sale. And then I also decided to drop my processing time to one day. And the reason for doing that is that this is December and Etsy is prioritizing things that ship out quickly because it wants customers to get their stuff before the holidays. They've mentioned this a few times in recent investor presentations where they'll say, they said something like, you know, when someone searches for something on Etsy, we know a lot about that customer because we see what they search for, we see what they click on, we see what they've bought. And we also know a lot about the listings and the shop and where the shop is located and how quickly things ship out. So yes, they're looking at the shop location for localization and they're looking at processing times to determine what goes into search and is shown to people. But since this is my slow season, I decided to go ahead and put you know everything on one day shipping. What that does is for the filters on the app, when you drop your processing time, it that estimated arrival time filter will now show you at a lower arrival date, like a, a, an arrival date that comes sooner. So that kind of takes care of that. And also if you go down to shipping on the Etsy filters on the app, it gives you a choice between items that ship in one day and items that ship in three days. And that doesn't show up in the filters on the desktop, it's only on the app but it's on the app, so we do need to pay attention to it. So basically by doing those three things, I've taken care of the main filters that Etsy is presenting to people to use on the app. So that's the Etsy side of it. The other thing is that I dropped my prices and pulled that shipping out and made those things paid shipping by the customer. And that makes me more competitive with the undercutters. It's not really even that because by the time you pay for the shipping and I still have my lower price, I'm still making more money than when I had the free shipping. It's very close to what people were paying with the free shipping, but they're actually paying just a little bit more. And I'm still not as low as the undercutters. I'm not going to go as low as they are, but this does make it much less jarring for people to see the two prices side by side. So the first thing I tried was the processing time because that's easy. And that actually picked my sales up a little bit, I think. And that makes sense because it's Christmas and it's he wants things to ship out quick. The big question though is did pulling that shipping cost out affect the sales of everything else? And the answer is no. And remember there were things that I left free shipping on on an individual listing basis. Those kept selling and the things that I dropped the price on and are, am now charging shipping on, they kept selling too and they were actually selling a little bit more than they were before I took the, the shipping cost out of the price. And even though I'm charging shipping now for those things, the point is that if everybody in your category is charging for shipping, then you charging for shipping is not gonna make that much of a difference. If customers see that everyone is charging for shipping, they'll just think that that's normal for that type of product and they'll go ahead and pay it. And I did mention that the undercutters are charging more than I am for shipping. So that might make my listings look even a little bit better. And like I mentioned, the sale itself, I took off of my shop because it didn't seem to be making any difference at all. It just didn't matter. But doing this stuff didn't hurt my sales and I'm still getting just as many sales as I was, if not a little bit more. And yes, this is going to be dependent on what other people in your niche are doing. If everyone is offering free shipping, then you probably should do that too. 
But if they're not, then you might be able to do it this way and still make as many sales, if not more, because your prices look like they're more in line with the average. And yes, people still like free shipping. And so if you can put that in place, do it. The things that I have in my shop that are more expensive, they still ship for free and they're still selling. And I sold one of them right before I made this video. And I will say that you need to pay attention to what Etsy is doing on the app, because like I said, most people are shopping on the app now, and it's really important to pay attention to how Etsy is structuring things on the app because that tells you what they want from us and it tells you what they're going to put on the first page of search. And I think that we're really going to have to start playing the Etsy game more than we ever did just because of how search is working. The way that you do SEO is not gonna change materially. You need to be accurate and you need to have good keywords that you've researched, but there are so many other things that go into search now. It's not just that. You need to pay attention to the structure of Etsy and how you can make that structure work for you. And we've always had to think about how customers respond to our Etsy shops and the sales that we run and that kind of thing. And that is not changed. We still have to think about customers first. But you also need to think about what Etsy wants. Really pay attention to that now because it's becoming more important. So if something's going on in your category or if Etsy's pushing an idea and everybody's hopping on it, you might want to try it out if it makes sense for your business. Because if Etsy's pushing it, then it might be something that will be beneficial to you in search placement. And we really need to learn to play the Etsy game if you haven't learned that already. And that's just how it is. Am I going to keep all these things in place that I tried out? No, I probably will move my processing time back up to one to three days because I just like it that way. And I did take the sale off my shop already. I mentioned that. But as far as dealing with what's going on with the undercutters, this strategy seems to be OK pricing wise. So I'm not losing money by doing it this way. If that's what it takes to get people into your shop, then that's what it takes and you do need to play the game. So watch what Etsy's doing, watch what your competition is doing in case you have undercutters and that means that you need to shift something. Use the Etsy system to your advantage. Leave me any questions in the comments and I will talk to you later.